In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, we gather now on this 14th Sunday in Ordinary Time, and we also celebrate the 4th of July weekend. Today in the Gospel, Jesus sends the disciples out two by two to preach the kingdom of God, to preach a message of peace, hope, and justice for all. Let us pause now for a moment to truly prepare our hearts to celebrate these wondrous and sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you willingly embrace the cross, bringing salvation to all God's people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you send laborers to announce the good news of the kingdom. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, you call us to proclaim that your kingdom is at hand. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy. For on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad because of her, all you who love her. Exult, exult with her, all you who are mourning over her. Oh, that you may suck fully of the milk of her comfort, that you may nurse with delight at her abundant breasts. For thus says the Lord, Lo, I will spread prosperity over Jerusalem like a river, and the wealth of the nations like an overflowing torrent. As nurslings, you shall be carried in her arms and fondled in her lap. As a mother comforts her child, so will I comfort you. In Jerusalem, you shall find your comfort. When you see this, your heart shall rejoice, and your bodies flourish like the grass. The Lord's power shall be known to his servants. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial psalm. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Shout joyfully to God, all the earth. Sing praise to the glory of his name. Proclaim his glorious praise. Say to God, how tremendous are your deeds. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Let all on earth worship and sing praise to you, sing praise to your name. Come and see the works of God, his tremendous deeds among the children of Adam. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, may I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ 
through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. For neither does circumcision mean anything, nor uncircumcision, but only a new creation. Peace and mercy to all who follow this rule and to the Israel of God. From now on, let no one make trouble for me, for I bear the marks of Jesus on my body. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, brothers and sisters. Amen. The word of the Lord. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, the Lord appointed 72 others whom he sent ahead of him in pairs to every town and place he intended to visit. He said to them, the harvest is abundant but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. Go on your way. Behold, I am sending you like lambs among wolves. Carry no money bag, no sack, no sandals, and greet no one along the way. Into whatever house you enter, first say, Peace. To this household. If a peaceful person lives there, your peace will rest on him. But if not, it will return to you. Stay in the same house and eat and drink what is offered to you, for the laborer deserves his payment. Do not move about from one house to another. Whatever town you enter and they welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick and say to them, the kingdom of God is at hand for you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My sisters and brothers in Christ, it's worth noting that when Jesus sends his followers out into the world, they are not sent empty-handed. They go bearing one simple message, and that message is peace. Jesus tells them, into whatever household you enter, first say, peace to this household. It is also the first word that Jesus proclaimed to the apostles after the resurrection, when he appeared to them in the upper room. He said to them, peace be with you. And it is the great message that he is asking them, and by extension extension, asking all of us to carry out into the world. Carry no sack, no money, no sandals, carry instead the gift of peace. It is his first word to those who truly wish to follow Christ. Over 2,000 years later, I'm not so sure we've done a very good job of spreading that word. Whatever else there may be in the world today, we realize there is very little peace. And I'm not only speaking of the absence of war, though God knows we 
don't lack for wars as evidenced right now in the continuing war in Ukraine and the other troubled areas of the world. But there are also con countless conflicts that erupt in our daily lives between husbands and wives, between parents and children, between neighbors and co-workers, even between strangers on the street. How often have you witnessed road rage as you drive around our community? But how often do we strive to put these conflicts aside and say to people in our daily lives, peace, peace be with you. How often do we make peace our mission and our message? How often do we strive to be Christ for one another? How often do we seek the face of Christ in the faces of others, those that we do not understand or those with whom we disagree. The writer Anthony DeMello tells the story of a man whose marriage was in trouble. He sought advice from a spiritual master, and the master told him, you must learn to listen to your wife. The man took the advice to heart and returned several weeks later and said he'd learned to listen to every word his wife was saying. The master smiled and said, Good, now go home and listen to every word she isn't saying. My dear sisters and brothers in Christ, I think if more of us did that, not just with our spouses, but with each other, it might be the beginning, the first step toward making peace a reality, to really listen to what others are saying and what they're not saying. Because to listen that way means that we don't have the last word. In fact, it makes Christ's first word the last word, peace. It means a kind of humility and attentiveness to one another that Christ asks of us. It is a way of going into the world with nothing except what really matters. Because in truth, the detachment that Jesus is demanding isn't just a, de 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 excuse me, a detachment from things, though that's a start. It is a detachment from ourselves. It is separating from our own pride, our own ego, our own sense of entitlement, our own feeling that we always have to be right. It is taking with us nothing but what we are, stripped of what we pretend to be, divested of what we own, all that we use to impress people. It is putting aside everything and carrying forth just one message in Christ's name, and that is the gift of peace. As we celebrate Independence Day, let us pray in a special way that we will honor who we are, one nation under God. Let us pray for true peace to reign throughout our country, our world, beginning in our own hearts and homes. And let us pray that through that peace, we bring liberty and justice to all. Amen. And together now we pray the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. My sisters and brothers, with confidence, 
let us humbly bring our prayers and our needs before our merciful Lord. For our church, may the Lord raise up holy men and women to humbly labor on her behalf. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our country, as we celebrate our freedom, may we be united in our mission to bring peace and justice to all the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are alienated from God and his holy church, may Christ's message of love and healing bring them back into his loving arms. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick, may God restore them to the fullness of life and health and liberate them from all that afflicts them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, may they come to share in the fullness of Christ's glory and enjoy his favor forever. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father of mercies, you sent your Son that we might come to know the gift of the kingdom. Hear the prayers we offer this day, and please answer them according to your holy will for us. For we ask this through your Son, Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Through the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. O Lord, wash me in peace. Cleanse me from all of my sins. Pray now, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be pleasing and acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man and woman in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. And we eat this bread and drink this cup. We proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy, the religious, and all your faithful people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. My friends, the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And may that peace now enter your hearts and your homes and all with whom you share peace today. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have, Have mercy, mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have, Have mercy, mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant, Grant us, us peace. peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you through Christ our Lord. Amen. And our prayer now for Father Baker's canonization. Lord, Lord you, you gave us your servant, Nelson, Nelson Baker, as an example of service to the poor, homeless, and young. By Father Baker's ardent concern for those in need, inflame our hearts and lives with compassion for the poor, justice for the oppressed, hope for the troubled, and courage for those in doubt. We pray through the intercession of Our Lady of Victory, if it be your will, that your servant, Nelson Baker, may one day be canonized. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our Lady of Victory, pray for us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in peace to glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.